Well, what do you know? It is a winning Monday again. Wonder, Monday winner. What do we call it? Victory, Victory Monday is Mondays what we call it, right? Davey. Victory Monday <laughs> here in Davie. What a win by the Dolphins yesterday. John, have you, have you dried off yet? Are you, no, you, I'm are still you, soaked. Yeah, I, yeah I'm, I'm still, still soaked to the bone from that one. Feet but, are little. Uh, Felt felt pretty good about wet. it in the end when that field goal went over. The the the, uh, the cold, the damp, all the all the wet rain out there didn't seem to bother you much after that that field goal went through with it, uh, with no time in the clock. It was fun to watch. I yeah. mean, it was fun to be a fan because it yeah. seemed like the stadium w- was going crazy pretty much the entire football game. And you're right, watching that field goal, you're just saying, get the snap back, yeah. Yeah. get the hold down, just and please get it off. Just get it through. Get it through. <laughs> you know? Hey, uh, you're watching the Audible presented by Ticketmaster. If you're watching us on Periscope, you can send your questions in via. Twitter, just hashtag the audible. You can see us on a rebroadcast on the Miami Dolphins Facebook page beginning tomorrow, and you can see us on MiamiDolphins.com. But John, a, a, a huge win for this football team, um, no doubt about that. Going into that game, you knew you had to win that game if you wanted any chance of making these last three games meaningful for the rest of the season. Uh, and, and for a while there, it looked like they were going to be on cruise control, twenty-one to nine after the first drive in the second half. And you're thinking, okay, fine, let's just put this game away. And uh, and then everything happened. Yeah. And, and not the least of which, obviously, uh, the injury to Ryan Tannehill. So the news on Ryan Tannehill as of today went down, had an MRI today. He's got a sprain, not a tear, a sprain of the ACL and the MCL. So he won't need surgery as of now, unless something changes here in the next couple of days. But I don't think anyone expects him to have to go and have surgery, which to me, John, is the best news you could get for Ryan Tannehill. Probably not the best news for the team. Best news for the team would be having him ready, okay. have him ready to play this week. But for him not to have to undergo surgery on an ACL, which is a brutal, brutal rehab and a, and a long nine-month grueling kind of a deal to go through, he can get over this thing. He can get over this thing without any surgery, without being casted up and all those things. And I, I think certainly for him, uh, after the after laying down on that turf yesterday, it's probably the best news that he could get. Well, I think Ryan and the organization, they have to be pleased with the outcome so far. Yep. I'm sure he's going to get a second and possibly a third opinion. But right now, you're not looking at surgery. And I think that's yep. the biggest thing that the Miami Dolphins and R- Ryan has to feel good about. Yep. You know, you, you have a hit that's that's at the knee area that's kind of a, you know, a, a thing that the NFL has really taken uh, a really close look at. And I'm sure there's going to be a fine coming yep. uh, to Campbell. Uh, he's already had one this year. But for Ryan's sake, you know, coming back and, and being able to be a quarterback at the level that he's become, yeah. at the level that he's set, that he's trending towards, uh, it's a good thing that he doesn't have to take a step or two yeah. back and have to go back and, and rehab and, and go through all the process of getting things off the field in, in order to get on yeah. back on the field. So it's probably going to be a month or you know, maybe five to six weeks yeah. before he can actually function. We hope, you know, maybe yeah. guys heal quicker than others, but f- safe to say that he probably played his last down uh, as a member of the Miami Dolphins this year. Now, yeah. if the Miami Dolphins can continue, yeah. there's always a possibility. But for right now, best news, best case scenario. Yeah, I, I think were this the beginning of the season, second or third game of the season, and you're starting mm-hmm. to look at, well, how long is he going to be out? I would, think the, I would think the prognosis would be four to six weeks possibly encroaching into eight weeks before, especially with your quarterback, you want him to be 100% healthy. You want him to be, have him come back where he's not, not quite there. And I think, John, the big thing to me is that he won't have to come back next year and go through that process of – how does it feel? How does it feel? Yeah. Are, are you what comfortable you do? with it? You know, are, are you still thinking about yeah. it? You have to get through all these types of things, and which is which that in itself, the psychological uh, aspect of getting through a knee injury and knee surgery, it's a whole different thing. I think that a lot of people don't don't really understand. But it's one thing about getting the surgery done, going through the rehab, and then you got to go out there and test it, yeah. and then you got to be ready to go out in a game situation where you just let everything go and not even think about it, and that takes a long time for for a lot of players to get to. Look what Brandon and Albert went yes. through, you know, and that's a, a really prime example that not too long ago with the, the, the modern technology and the way they do surgeries these days and the way that they keep up and try to get guys out on the field even quicker than the year before and the year before that, yep. you know, he still had a struggle mental and physical uh, about getting through some hurdles and, yep. and overcoming some obstacles <laughs> in his rehabilitation and the way he played. And now it's almost like you don't think about that anymore yep. with Brandon Albert. And that's what Ryan Tannehill hopefully doesn't have to go through. He doesn't have to go through those hoops and hurdles and obstacles about getting to a certain stage to 
feel like himself again, which is which is big yeah. for a quarterback. Well, so that's Ryan Tannehill. That's the news on him. That's where he's at right now. Kiko Alonso on a local radio station uh, just about an hour ago said that he's going to play on Sunday. I'm sure the team's not real excited about him delivering that news the way he delivered it. But, hey, it's out there. He said he's going to play. I thought there was a chance he would play, was going to play yesterday. Yeah, I did too. Uh, but that hamstring just a little too much, so uh, didn't play yesterday. But that gives him that extra week's time to get himself ready for the Saturday evening game game uh, up against the New York Giants up in the Meadowlands. So uh, uh, it's going to be an interesting week to see what happens along here. Let's go ahead and what do you say we'll get some, some questions here yeah, along the way. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, at, uh, at Devin Gilhan, uh, do you think Mike Hall's performance a week, uh, the performance will, do you think what you think with Mike Hall's performance, he will become a starter, maybe move Kiko outside? No, I don't. I, I don't look. He had an interception early in the game. That was great news for him, but I don't think he's ready to be a, 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 a full-time starter at this point. Look, I look at him out there. He's a little smallish out there. Uh, did a, he's done some good things in pass coverage. I think there were times in the run games where maybe he got a little bit uh, overpowered in those types of situations. So, no, I don't think that – I don't think Kiko's spot is in danger uh, because of Mike's Hall's, Mike Hall's performance uh, in the game yesterday. Well, I, I think in, in saying that, I, I, I agree with you, but Mike stepped up to the yes, challenge. Yes, And I, I think he did a really good job of, of being able to catch that football yeah. in, the, in those conditions no and being able to, you know, lead – uh, tied for the lead in, in team yep. with the tackles with eight, you know, with Spencer Pacinger, who was filling in for Jelani Jenkins. Yep. So we had two guys that hadn't been asked to play starting roles. And with his first start in a national football league, it wasn't the, the spotlight well, was wasn't too was, bright. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. And, and look, yeah. he didn't shrink for, right. he didn't shrink from the chore. No but question to, about that. To that question, but, Kiko's safe with but, his but, starting job. But I job. would say this, I mean, I mean, in, in this, to me this year, when I look at this year, I think there's been a lot of depth created on this football oh, team yeah. going forward for next year. You take a guy like Mike Hall, and because of the injury to Kiko, he got a chance to start and play a whole football game. He got valuable reps right. to understand what it takes to play at this level in a meaningful football game, and those that kind of work is invaluable for these guys. Same thing for for Tony Lippett, same thing for Spencer Pacinger, yeah. same thing for uh, Ulrich and Steen, and those guys have been had right. to fill in and play on, on the offense. And So all these guys that are getting these reps in game time situations, to me it only spells good news going forward as we get ready get into 2017 with this football team you know you get a situation like that next year where Mike Hall's got to come and play you feel pretty good because he's already done there been there done that knows what it takes to play at that level he's going to get a chance to, to tomorrow to look at the tape or, or today he's I only going to get better the tape yeah and, and, and make corrections right. so yeah it's only going to only going to help him to be a better football player uh, you're watching the uh, you're watching the Audible here presented by uh, if you haven't seen our new uh, sponsor Ticketmaster. It's pretty good. Nice cups here, yeah. nice mugs, aren't huh, you? You know what, I, Squatch? I got to tell him, put a little something in here today. It's yeah, pretty a little good. something extra in it's there. Nice. But you know Thank what? The you, nice Squatch. thing about this is it's going to look really nice at home tomorrow when I'm sitting there. You know, well, these reading, are mugs. reading a newspaper. Right. Having a cup of Joe, yeah. you know, thinking about what the morning with thinking about what concerts I'm going to go see. Might have to go to the AAA. You know? Might have to go down you know, and see exactly. some. Yeah, no right. doubt about it. Thank you guys. All right, let's. Uh, you can go ahead and watch. Uh, if you're watching us on uh, uh, on uh, Periscope, you can go ahead and send your questions via Twitter. Just hashtag the Audible. You can see us on a rebroadcast beginning tomorrow on the Miami Dolphins Facebook page and on MiamiDolphins.com at Big Bert four one three. Will Xavier Howard? Be ready. I think he's right in the cusp of being ready. Almost if he's as not close ready, as Kiko. I, I, I thought he was going to play. I thought there was a slight chance he would play yesterday. Um, they decided to hold him out another week, and I would think that uh, that this may be an opportunity for him to get in and get get some plays in. They may maybe on a little pitch count for him a little bit, maybe not a snap count, and not not let him get too much in there. But uh, I, I think he's close. And I'll say it again: if he's not this week, then. You would think that next week would be uh, would be ground zero for them. These are the types of games and the types of weeks that the Miami Dolphins are looking for guys to come off the bench and be productive. And it doesn't matter if you're a full time starter, if you're a half time starter, if you've played a little bit this year. I, I think the depth in numbers it only helps the starters, but it also has a trickle down effect on special teams. You know, yeah. yesterday was a perfect example when you have Spencer Pacinger and Mike Hall, who probably play yeah. on all those teams, having to, you know, move into starters roles. And that hurts sometimes yes. on special teams. So you had guys like Walt Aiken step up. Yep. You had, you know, other guys in those teams step up. Uh, Lafayette Pitts, you know, other guys yep. that are playing pivotal roles. But if you can get a guy like Xavier Howard back and playing 25 to 35 yep. plays, that 
it should help. Allows one of those guys to, right. to yeah, a little on rest. special yep. teams. So I bit. and it'll help in your pass coverage yep. because this is a guy's a physical corner. Speaking of special teams, how how big? Yeah. How big was the two? Was, how big was the block? Ever, block the extra point and 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 run it back for a two point. I never taken. think of that play. No, never. Okay. Although we've seen it probably we, two I know or three that, times this but, year, right? But I'm saying when you get in those situations, go, ah, well, it's going to be, you know, yeah, give yeah, them the give no. me extra point now. Hey, and look, man, you know, I guess you know, moving it back, the ball comes out a little right. lower, and these guys got to, you know, guys have a bigger opportunity. But I think it was uh, Jordan Phillips that blocked it, he did. and uh, and Walt Aiken scoops it up, and uh, <laughs> he, he was off to the I, races. Had, I had Walt on uh, in the free post game show after I said, well, what do you think? He goes, well, I know this when I got there. That was a long way to run. <laughs> he did. I talked to him today, Bo. It was great. He goes, I didn't think a hundred yards or or it felt like yeah. 100 yards was that long. Yeah. He says, I was running and running. He said, the piano, the monkey, everybody jumped <laughs> on my back. It was, it, but look at it. I mean, look how important that was. And, and, I know uh, it. And what a crazy game, John. I mean, well, you come out. Of, you get the two points and then the one that, that clinks off the upright. Yeah, right, There's exactly. five points for Arizona. Yeah, no different. And then he missed, and then he, he yanks like a high one. snap on the one. That's misses right. the extra points. So yeah. uh, three, five. Seven point or six points, right? right. Six points in yeah. uh, just off uh, off the field goal kicker uh, with the Arizona Cardinals. But but what I mean, it's funny because I'm reading uh, reading all this stuff today, and Bruce Arians was, well, geez, how come it, how come it rained every time we were on offense? <laughs> like, they did. Like they they did. Was- Look, I'm I'm listening. You know, obviously I'm doing the radio on the sideline, so I'm listening to the radio broadcast with Joe and Jimmy and Bob. And, uh, and and it seemed like every time that the he Arizona Cardinals went, they go, oh, here it comes the rain again. <laughs> <laughs> he was right. You know, I'm watching it from the from the uh, press box, and it just seemed like I'm looking up in the lights, yeah. and it's harder to see. And Arizona's on the field. Yeah. I'm going, well, this is great. That's right. Yeah. You know, exactly. kind of lighting up when Ryan would take the field. So although the, the, the rain started coming down when Matt Moore got in the yeah, game, yeah, did. Pretty we had to good. deal with that. And, yeah, uh, right. We haven't talked about Matt Moore yet. And uh, what did I tell you? What a job! You the first two series, you could tell they were just going to try to run out the clock and see if they can just Hold get on. in, and hang on as much as they could. And then you get in a situation where Arizona ties it up at 23. Now you got to make some plays. And boy, he hits uh, he hits Kenny Stills on that little crossing yeah. route. Great throw, great catch there. And then with all the pressure in his face, throws one up to the end zone. And and Kenny Stills makes the adjustment, and makes that play, gets the ball to the to the one yard line. And uh, boy, I tell you what, what a sigh of relief when uh, when he caught that football. Great catch. But Matt Moore's ability to even have enough power yep. and strength and grip yep. to get the football out that far in those conditions. Uh, was phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, and it takes a, a mentality that Matty has to to throw the football and get it even close to Kenny Stills. And it was a great throw by him just to get it close and a better play by Stills to fend off pass yeah. interference, which you're going to get a good play anyway, but catch the football and almost get into almost the end zone. In, yeah. So, you know, you have back-to-back plays where Matt Moore does a great job in locating the football, getting it over on the crosser, yeah. and then getting it close on the 29-yarder that sets up the winning field goal. Yeah, good good stuff, no doubt about it. That King Adlin says, uh, Bo, can we win one game? I'm going I'm to say how the way he probably wrote Bo, can we win one game this year when we can breathe in the fourth quarter? I don't think so. I, I don't think so either. In fact, I, I think on the pregame show yesterday, I said, look, if anyone's going to win this game in a blowout, it's going to be Arizona. Right. If the game's close, then the We're Dolphins be, have the chance to win right. the game. That's how they win the game. And that's certainly – and, and you know, it's it's funny. I mean, uh, Coach Gaze, after the game, said, geez, every game, every game. And he says, every t- every game I go into, I think the, the person the, – the team that ends up with the ball last going to end up winning the football game. And you watch around the National Football League, and that's not far from uh, no, from the truth. That is gospel. Yeah. You know, it's, it just seems like teams have a – find a way – to score with their last opportunity, yeah. and and it's it's harder on defenses just because of the way uh, the rules are. I mean, yeah. you're throwing the football, and you you really can't put your hands on receivers. They get a lot of free releases, and uh, it's opportunities for the offense. Yeah. When you have decent field position, decent weather, d- decent conditions, you know these quarterbacks can move the football down with under a minute left to go and get yourself in field goal opportunity situations or get in for yeah. six points and win a game. Yeah, I want to talk to you about something here before we get after we get back here. Hey, you're, you're watching the Audible presented by Ticketmaster. If you're watching us on Periscope, you're welcome to send your questions in. We'll get to them here. We'll kind of run through a bunch of them here after this. Uh, you can just send them via Twitter. Just hashtag the Audible. You can also watch us on a rebroadcast on the Miami Dolphins Facebook page beginning tomorrow and on MiamiDolphins.com. 14 penalties, 118, yeah. 14 penalties, 118 yards. And those pass interference calls late in the game, boy, really just really, really hurt a football team. And John, you're up in the press box. I was down on the sideline, so I don't get the I don't get to see the 
some of the replays and some of the different looks down there that, that you guys get to see there. But I know this. There, there, are, there, there have been three or four times I'm just screaming at the referees. Come on, why don't you give us – I'm looking at the – one, 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 one of the other way. One of the pass interference calls or, or defensive holding <clears throat> calls they called – uh, 25 on a stop yards play. away from the I'm looking. Ball. I'm looking at Cam Wake. Cam Wake's coming around the corner, and Ulrich John's got him wrapped around the neck. And I'm going, hey, why don't you? Why don't someone call this guy when, when this guy barely touches a guy right. out here? It's it's just you know to me. And look, it's it's sour grapes. I'll admit that. You know, I I I, I look at some of the calls that have been given to this football team really over the last three or four weeks, and, and you scratch your head sometimes, yeah. and you wonder what do you have to do as a defender to be able to play in this league without without. Get the flag's the flag. flying around, you know? You're exactly right, Bo. And it has hurt the Miami Dolphins. You know, remember during that six-game winning streak, that was one of the things that was kind of a red flag. Yep. It kind of stuck out. You know, the the penalties. It was eight penalties for 90 yep. yards. It was 10. It was 11. Yeah. You know, there was a lot of penalties that this team fought and overcame and yep. still won those football yep. games. But it's going to come and catch up to you at some point. Yep. But you're right. Those, it has to even out. You would think if you're Adam Gase and you're the coaching staff that those penalties over the next three weeks, you hope, you cross your yep. fingers, that it evens out because, number one, you're on the road you know, in back-to-back yep. weeks and you're in cold-weather environments and you're in an AFC East rivalry-type situation. Yep. So you know, those are, it's going to be a highly and hotly contested battle. You hope some of those calls fall to the Miami Dolphins. All you want is fair. You just want fair. You're going to call it this way for us, call it that way for them, and just be fair across the board. And look, I'm not saying that these officials, they're not rooting for one team. They could care less who wins a football game. They're out there doing their jobs. But, uh, boy, it just – I mean, I mean, I go back to the San Diego game where the Dolphins had 11 penalties yeah. and San Diego had four penalties. You know, when you've got that disparity in penalties, you know, and, then, I've, then I've got a little bit of an issue with it. And another thing, I thought that game was going to go into 7 o'clock after the yeah. first quarter and a yes, half of yeah. play with yeah. all the replays yeah. and, and all, all the challenges. It was it crazy. Did. The game ended like 4.30, somewhere, somewhere around there, 4.35. Uh, at Justin Ovation, what does Matt Moore bring to the table – for those who need a 2011 history lesson, well, he hasn't played in a long time. But 2011, I don't remember. I remember the only time that he's played for Ryan Tannehill over the last five years, like three years ago. Yes. Uh, Ryan went down in New York against the Jets for a little right. while, came back in the game, right. and uh, Matt got his opportunity there. But I don't think Matt <laughs> – I'm not going back to 2011. There's no, no even reason to go back and do that. But here's a guy, John – uh, that, that hasn't had many snaps in game situations, certainly over the last five years since Ryan's been here. Hasn't got very many snaps. Even uh, Coach, uh, Coach Gaze in his press conference uh, yesterday after the, uh, after the game said, look, you know, I, I haven't called a play with him you know, since training camp, right. since the preseason games. And I haven't called 20, uh, you know, just community, this first two series, he just wanted to get the communication right. between he and, and Matt Moore going. So, you know, Matt's got a big step to to take here. But I know this, Matt, who, who by the way, was was gone today. His wife was having a baby. That was congratulations. Pre- yeah, congratula- congratulations to him. Um, and I, and I, was thinking this, I was thinking this last night because I talked to Matt before the game. I knew his wife was going to, uh, they were going to have a baby today. And, and I'm thinking, you know, Ryan goes down, Matt's up in the podium of the press conference. Everyone's asking about getting prepared for the game. And he's trying to avoid this whole thing. Well, you know, my wife's having he's a baby. To get to the hospital. He's just trying to get to the hospital mm-hmm. and everything. And, and, and in, the, in the midst of the whole turmoil that's, right. that's going on during that moment, I'm just sitting there looking at Matt going, man, what must be going through his mind right now? We saw him today and he had, you know, the hospital sticker yeah, yeah. visiting <laughs> yeah. uh, pass on. Uh, everything was great. Uh, baby boy. So he yeah. was happy. Uh, I, I think what you can expect from Matt Moore is a quarterback that will be thoroughly prepared uh, just like he has been over the past 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 weeks of the regular season. He's going to go in. He's going to have a game plan. He's going to get to the plays and Adam Gase is going to get to the plays that best suit him yeah. and and try to get some crossover on things that have been working in the running game and the play action game. But there's going to be a handful of plays that you'll probably see a little bit of a wrinkle yeah. on because Matt Moore has to put his stamp on this game plan and things that he does really well and accentuate some of the throws that he likes. Yeah. So I think you will see a uh, some different wrinkles in the in the offense, but I, I do think that Matt will be prepared, and, and that's all you want. Yeah. You want a guy that makes good decisions, protects the football, and that can move the Miami Dolphins in the end zone, you know, yeah. as an end result. And I think Matt will be prepared to do that. John, I would assume the conversation today was 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 about and will continue to be Matt, 
G- give me the, give me a dozen plays that you like. Give me yeah. a dozen throws that you really like, you feel good about. Let's incorporate them in the game plan, and then let's make sure that we run as many of those plays as many times as we can during the course of this week and get him as many reps with everything, not just the things <clears throat> right. he likes, but with everything, but certainly focus on the things that he feels comfortable with. So then when he goes into that game Saturday night in New York, he f- he's comfortable with what he's got in his back pocket. Well, I, I think that – Adam has done that with Ryan Tannehill. I think they have trimmed uh, the play calling aspect or what's available to the offense. Just take a look at at some of the scenarios yesterday. You have a third down and probably six or seven, and they go and uh, run a rub play where where, um, Jarvis comes in and and Sims goes to the outside. He gets tackled for no first down. They come back in the red zone and run the exact same play for a touchdown. Touch, yeah. You know, there's two plays on third and short and in goal line situations that are they're on the same playlist. Yeah. They're yeah. on the same, you know, wavelength that they're getting to trimming what they like to do in short yardage situations yeah. as well as red zone opportunities. I think that'll carry over for Matt. Yeah, no doubt about it. And he's gonna get the look, he's gonna get a lot of reps this week and uh uh he'll be the guy going. So I, I think he'll be ready. Look, he's a guy that loves to throw the ball down the field. He's very confident in his ability to throw the football and so you know we'll, we'll see what he brings to the table add dylan tartero uh, how optimistic are you all that the rest uh how optimistic are you all about the rest of the season well look john and i were just talking about that before we came in the air i think the scenario is like this the denver broncos got us a little bit of a favor by losing yesterday right. the broncos have remaining they have the raiders they kansas have city kansas city and, new and they have new england i'm not sure what order those they, <laughs> they play those teams the Dolphins have New England. They've got Buffalo, and they've got or they've got the the Jets. They've got Buffalo, and they've got New England. And whoever wins two out of those three games is probably going to get the opportunity yes. to to move on and, and and move into the playoffs. So the Dolphins they can't worry about they they can't worry about what Denver's doing. They've got to do what they've done all year long. Worry about game one, game one being this Saturday up in uh, New York. Then worry about Buffalo the week after. Because if they start looking along the way, then then they're going to get lost. They get lost, and and, and then you're in trouble. So, uh, but but that's the kind of the way the situation. How optimistic am I? <clears throat> Look, the Jets are a team that's in turmoil right now. They've got quarterback problems. They got more problems than quarterback problems. The coach is being talked about being you know let go. Uh, Todd Bowles and all this. Same thing. with the week, ne- the next week after. <clears throat> yeah, that. exactly. Same with the next week after that. So you got teams that are kind of fluttering <clears throat> there, and, and there's always opportunity there. But look, I, I know this. I've been around the Dolphins and Jets long enough. I don't care what's going on, and I don't want to use the old cliche line, but I'm going to do it. it doesn't matter what the record is. No. They're going to go out and they're going to play like it's the most meaningful game, uh, you know, of of any season at any time, and, and let the chips fall where they may. So it's not going to be easy, but I think the opportunity for the Dolphins to get where they want to be is certainly at their feet right now. I'm very optimistic in the Miami Dolphins' chances only because I believe in what this team is doing. I believe the way they're being coached. I believe the way they're executing. I believe the way they're attacking each week as an individual week. And I think the players honestly do uh, attack the week and believe that mantra. They they believe that if they can be 1-0 this week – their season can continue. Their opportunity for playoffs can continue, but it can only do that if they beat the New York Jets. Yep. And I think that's their singular focus right now. And I, I do think this locker room, there's enough good players in this on this football team to overcome injuries, to overcome obstacles, call bad calls, a lot of penalties, to be able to find themselves in a winning situation this Saturday night in New York. You know, the thing that the thing that got lost in the conversation yesterday after a the win, after b Ryan Tannehill getting hurt, <laughs> you know, the conversation around all that stuff was how well this team reacted from losing in Baltimore the way they did where they lost on every facet of the football. They lost on offense, defense, and special teams, looked inept most of the time, and for all weaker than, geez, what's this team going to be like when they come back? Well, they, they proved to be a resilient team coming back from a loss like that to be able to come back and play the way they did uh, in, in the game yesterday. And that kind of got lost in the conversation, but I think, I, I think it kind of... It kind That's of su- the reason to give kind you of optimism. Su- kind of supports what you talked yeah. about and, and, and reason to be optimistic. And we've had a number of guys that have hurt, that have been hurt, and had backups come in, and they've lay, they've raised their level of play uh, in order to be, to be able to compete. And, and I don't feel uh, I, I feel it's going to be the same thing with uh, Matt coming in. So I'm I'm pretty optimistic too. Uh, at 058, <clears throat> Ronald Edward, what's the biggest challenge? Uh, what's the biggest challenge changing quarterback at this point of the season? Well, obviously, John, I think the biggest challenge is that Matt Moore coming in. Hasn't played for the whole yeah, season. Rusty. Hasn't taken a snap in practice with the first team. Hasn't gotten a rep during the uh, during the games uh, since since training camp. So, 
Him getting him getting the rust knocked off, hitting getting the work in. I'm not worried about the time he's going to put in and the efforts he's going to put in to get ready for the game on Saturday. It's just getting ramped up and ready to go out and play a full game on Saturday night, a meaningful game on Saturday night after having been on the shelf for so long. Well, I'm sure you might be able to re- relate to this, but I, I just remember uh, coming in – uh, with a week to prepare, and maybe you weren't weren't starting at the time. You go through pregame warm up, and you almost feel like you've played an entire game yeah. because you're you're mentally and physically into the game and, and so prepared, and your adrenaline's yeah, pumping. Yeah, yeah. I think the biggest thing for Matt to do is to take it down yeah. a notch. Yeah. You know, during during the week, and and don't prepare any harder than he prepared each and every week yeah. as the backup. You know, do the same things because you prepared uh, as. As, as you were going to play yeah. every snap, go into that pregame, relax, throw the football around, don't do too much, and just ease yourself into yeah. the football game. And the biggest thing for him is just to go play, yeah. just to react to what he sees, anticipate what he sees, and go out and be a professional. And I think he's he's a, the type of guy that you want well, the, in this situation. I was say, the, the good thing about him is he's not a rookie or a guy that's in his second year that hasn't really been around, yeah. and, and they're going to get all you know hyped up and overventilated or hyperventilated and all this stuff. I think he understands that he'll be calm, he'll be cool, collected, because that's his nature anyway. That's, that's the kind of guy that he is. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not worried about that. I'm, I'm just, you know, I make sure. I know he's going to make sure when he's on this practice field, he can, makes every rep count yeah. for something as he moves forward. Uh, at uh, DW for fins, why did Camel not get a penalty for a low hit? Well, we'll find out if he gets fined for the low hit. He got fined for one already uh, this year. Eighteen thousand dollars already. Eighteen thousand yeah. dollars for that. But look, as a defensive lineman, I, I, I can't, I can't. I can't say anything about this. I mean, look, you're you're paid to do your job, right. and your job is to bite and cra- and and claw and scrape and and do whatever you can to try to get to the cornerback, quarterback. And you get, look to be honest with you, in, in, in game situation, you hit him any way you can hit him. Yeah, you get him you know, to the you, ground. You get him to the any ground way you, way you can. Get him. So I can't, as a, as a former defensive lineman, I, I can't I can't fault him for for doing his job. In, 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 you know, even though the guy got, uh, even though Ryan got hurt. Well, no, it? I mean, you take it back a few, you know, probably ten or fifteen years ago, that wouldn't even be a fine. Wouldn't be no. So it's one of those situations that today in today's NFL, he'll pay the cost for doing, you know, something that's a, a normal football move. Yeah. The only problem is that the Cardinals, I believe, have done this uh, on numerous occasions, times, yeah. and I think that's why you know this second offense for Campbell is probably going to cost him. Quite a bit. If the yeah. first one was close to twenty thousand, I would think the next one's going to be close to be double. But my problem with this, with that, John, and this is a, a, a rule problem for me. My problem: if you're a defensive lineman and you're down on all fours, and you and that quarterback's leg is right there, what are you supposed to do? Just stop? No, you're, you're probably going to go. You're, after you're supposed him. to just stop and not and, yeah. and not not hit the guy. Because I know that if I do that, if I stop and I don't hit the guy when I go in that meeting room on Monday and watch <laughs> that be tape, a problem. oh man. Yeah. Man. Well, you you know, you're you're doing that as an individual. You're just trying to do whatever yeah. you can to get to the quarterback. Yeah. It's just that sometimes there are certain players or c- certain guys that have an opportunity. It looked like Campbell was falling to the ground and his momentum took him into yeah. Ryan's knee. Now, whether he could have reached up right. higher instead of leading with the helmet yeah. or the shoulder, that's another question. Yeah. Uh, at Odyssey Artist Kim, I think Moore is com- uh, a comparable quarterback, but do you expect a run-heavy offense on Saturday? Well, look, the Jets Jets have been, you know, historically this year certainly uh, a good run defending and team. Forte may have gotten and, banged up. Forte got banged yeah. up too, so so they're gonna, you know, they're they're gonna want to throw the ball. But I mean, from a Dolphin standpoint, I think certainly to start this game, um, I, I think you 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 want to get the running game going. I think they've always they, each and every game's the same way. No matter whether it's Ryan or whether it's Matt, they want to get the running game going. The running game has to be a part of this offense for Matt to have as, have as much opportunity for success, success as possible. Because if you can't run the football and you get behind by 14 points, now it's going to be a miserable day for him because you know they're going to pin their ear back, ears back and make it as difficult on Matt Moore as they can. So the biggest protection that he's got for me going into the game is an effective running game early on. Jay Ajayi and play action pass are going to be Matt Moore's good friend, I think, on Saturday night because that's what it was with Ryan Tannehill at quarterback. They're going to try to pound Jay Ajayi. They're going to try to get him on the perimeter some, but they're also going to pull it and get a tight end behind yeah. the line of scrimmage going in the flat with a high-low stretch uh, for Matt to get out on the perimeter and move the pocket a little bit. I think that has to be still in this offense. Yeah. Even though Matt maybe doesn't move as well as Ryan does on the perimeter, you still have to be able to move that target and get right. those defensive linemen and ends 
and, and edge pressure thinking about that guy's not going to be seven to 10 yards behind yeah. the, the center. So there's going to be, a, I think there's going to be a lot of synergy in, in terms of the play calling. I just think that it'll be trimmed on certain yeah. aspects and maybe a heavily, uh, maybe there'll be a couple more shots down the field. Yeah. You, you never know what, what's in store. At Miami Man 305, will Mike Pouncey or Deion Jordan play this week? Mike Pouncey, no. Uh, I think Adam Gay said today that Mike Pouncey will not play. They're not expecting to play on Sunday. Deion Jordan, he's in that window where they've got to make a decision on Deion Jordan here within the next few days. I don't know if you know. <clears throat> it looks like he's been practicing. It looks like he's been yeah. working out a lot. And and Adam's had a lot of good things to say. But whether he works into the plans, I mean, there were eight guys on that defensive line in a rotation yeah. yesterday. And I think that was a big key for yeah. the Miami Dolphins. Every one of them were productive yeah. in their own way. I just, my mind, when I look at Deion Jordan, I don't see a guy healthy enough to play right now. Yeah. That, that's just... That's just what, what I see with my eyes. At Light on the Dome, how scary that we almost <laughs> ran out of time. I'm looking at this, and, and I'm just going, get down, get down. Matt was going to tackle yeah, exactly. Williams and then exactly. call timeout. I mean, for you know, one second, I, I mean, one second on yeah. the clock, I mean, that, that could have easily just been time run out, and here you go to overtime. Oh, that would, that would oh, have been the that would worst been a disaster scenario. Because as a head coach, you're thinking, I can run a play, try to win the game, yeah. but he's going to be tackled within five, six, yeah. seven seconds. 11, on, there's 11 seconds on, on the, the clock. top end of it. Yeah. But when he started in reverse field and came back and then started back around yeah. on the other side, I, I physically wanted well, Matt well, to tackle go, go back to Damian two, Williams. Go back to a couple weeks ago when we played the 49ers. They had five seconds left. That's right. And they got two plays off in five seconds. I know it. You know, remember? I know it. And you're looking at this, you go 11 seconds off. Plenty fine. Of you run it, run a play, get the ball in the middle of the field for the field goal. <laughs> kick, get a nine up. And all of a sudden, I'm looking at the clock going, oh, my goodness. I know it. time's going to run I out. I thought but, the same thing. Yeah, play. it was uh, – it was uh, it was crazy. Uh, at Ryan Linton one, uh, why is ESPN scared to report the Dolphins always giving away buck features? I I don't know. I, I don't know what ESPN how they program their shows or whatnot. All I know is every time I seem to watch a show and want to hear about football, there are a lot of girls talking about it, and I tune change the channel. But that's <laughs> that's just me. At I got game New Jersey. Cam Wake is the comeback player of the year. I think you gotta you gotta look at he's Cam Wake. The, he's in the conversation. If he's not in the conversation, nine and a half sacks. A good, it's not a good talk if he's not in the conversation. That's right. He he's had a sack during the six game winning streak in yesterday. So yep. you take out the Baltimore game, he's had at least a partial sack yep. in every one of those football yep. games. He's been impactful uh, going off the edge. He looks like Cam Wake of yep. three four years ago. And I'll tell you what, you forget you know the sacks are one thing. You know, I think you look how many plays where he he, he disrupted. Yeah. You know, some plays where where Carson had you know because some of those balls he threw, Throwing he just had to away. get it out and get right. it over people. And so, and Cam's been a big, a big part of that. So, uh, yeah, I think he certainly has to be in that conversation. Twitter, can ten wins take us to the playoffs, or will we need to win out? Uh, I think ten wins. Um, you got a pretty good chance. You got a pretty good shot, but 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 you you know you you got you got to beat the Jets in Buffalo. Have to. You you got to beat the Jets in Buffalo, and, and then it, it very well could come down to New England or very or not depending on what happens with Denver. But uh, look, you you I think this I think the top of the Dolphins in their minds got to be we got to win this thing out. We got to win three games and I agree and get this thing going. Um, El Chapo Jr. Should we be afraid of a team like the Jets that are out of the playoffs? I think yeah, look yes. I think whenever you're playing the Jets, I don't care what the scenario is. Yeah, I think they're going to come out and try to beat you. I don't think they're going to roll over, and they're in trouble. They're in disarray. Their quarterback situation Just think is, of is the mess. attitude that the Dolphins had a few years ago when the Jets were rolling a yeah. little bit, and it's like, you know, if we can just beat the Jets. Yeah. You know, that's at the least, same at least mentality. you walk away yeah. feeling good about You something. beat a rival. You beat a team yeah. that had a chance to get in. That's what they're feeling yeah. right now. Well, look, go back to the last time the Dolphins were in the playoffs. They beat, right. uh, they beat Brett Favre and the Jets. Uh, to win the game. I figure what defense alignment got the interception in that game that, that saved that football game for the Dolphins. But, uh, yeah, I, I'd absolutely be concerned about the Jets. Uh, at Jake Hood Hancock, uh, do we have a Wildcat package for Landry? Maybe. I don't know. At Michael DK, do you think you have a team with cha- – do you think we have a – you have a team with champion potential? You know, I, I don't think this team – this team is a long way from being, a, a, a you know, an AFC championship type team, a Super Bowl type team. But but I do feel good, John, that that they're moving in the. We're a lot closer to that now than we've been in the last decade and a half. I feel that if you're a fan and you watch your Miami Dolphins play, you can feel good about knowing every week this team has a chance to win a football game. It's not like their effort is poor. It's not like their execution is poor. They're going to work and put themselves in a position to win each and every week. Now, yeah. will they do that? Uh, consistently enough will they execute consistently yep. enough right now i don't think so but you feel like you have a chance 
you know, they're preparing that way. And I yeah. think that mentality is starting to grow on this football yeah, no team. Doubt. Uh, it's prime time 21. Any chance pass he returns this season? Chance, slim chance. That's what I see with that. And last one at Big Joe Dolphin 90. I expect more of a workload for all the running backs now due to the injury. Do you agree? I, I don't expect more of a running load for no, I don't I think, think that's going to change. I think those guys are going to go about their business the same way. I, I think that Damian Williams may get some more carries again. And Kenyon Drake week. may get some. Kenyon Drake, jump he's, off they're passes. starting to fill him in he, there. How about the red zone running yeah, yesterday? No doubt. Pretty good. No doubt. So I think they're just, I, I, think, I think that the more workload for the different running backs is not a factor in the, because of the injury. I just think it's a factor that they uh, want to get them all involved. They want to get them all involved. They all do different things. They've all got a different like play. I mean, Damian Williams with that uh, with the pass for the touchdown yesterday, love him in that situation, throwing the football to him. And, and how that's about what the they check did. down to JHI? We haven't seen <laughs> yeah, that in a long time. It yeah. went for plus 12 or 15 yeah, no right up the middle. So, yeah, I think the running backs are going to be a big part of the offensive game plan like they've always been. I don't expect it to be any different, than, uh, uh, but uh, it's going to be Matt Moore behind quarterback. Johnny, always a hey, pleasure, buddy. my man. That was fun. I'm, right. I'm glad we're drier yeah. today. Oh, than man, I'll tell you what, I, I came home last night and I felt the best hot shower I've had yes, in a long time. You've been watching The Audible presented by Ticketmaster. Join us again on Wednesday. We'll be here at 4.30. Again, you can watch us on Periscope. You can watch us on a delayed broadcast on the Miami Dolphins Facebook page and on MiamiDolphins.com. That is going to do it for the Audible today. I'm Kim Bo Camper. He's John Kajemi. I don't even know if I introduced you at the beginning That's of the show, right. but I think everyone knows you're on Mondays. You're here anyway. So I'm trying to be a staple here on Mondays. John Kajemi. John Kajemi. John Kajemi. <laughs> I did it three times so everyone knows. We'll catch Thank you on Wednesday. You. Have a good couple of days.